This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, Rabbi Isai. Baruch to the Kailal Agar Perka here in Kew Garden Hills, New York. So, Parshas the Haloischa. We have the Parsha of Ahivan Saya Haorain, by Yoimer Moshe, Kuma Hashem, Yafutsu, Ayevecha, Yanusu, Misanecha, Mipanecha. The two psukim, very short psukim, which are enclosed by the upside down nuns. The Parsha of the movement of a Sefer Tyra. So, um, that uh, gives us a good excuse to talk about the topic of moving a Sefer Tyra. Are you allowed to move a Sefer Tyra? Somehow in uh, our day and age, we view a Sefer Tyra like a sack of potatoes, like a folding chair. It's movable, it's transportable, it's, uh, you know, Sefer Tyra on the go, everything is on the go, including why not a Sefer Tyra? So that's the question. Are you allowed to move? a Sefer Torah, to another location, to another shul, to another room, to the base of El, Le'olenu. Is this permitted? Are there certain guidelines, restrictions? Does it have to be read from a minimum number of times? So the idea over here is based on uh, a Mishnah. The Mishnah, Mesech the Yuma, Perek Zayin, Mishnah Aleph, the Mishnah tells us that on Yom HaKippurim, Baloi Kayin Gadol the Kayin Gadol would come to read, Imroit said the big day boots, Kaira, if he wanted to wear his linen garments, good. Bimlav, the Istilis Lav and Mishala, he could wear his own white garment. Now how did we get the Sefer Torah to the Kayin Gadal? So the Mishnah says, Chazana Knesses, Noito Sefer Torah. The Chazan takes it, Venois no Lorisha Knesses. He gives it to the president. Varosha Knesses Noise Laskan. The Skan gives it to the executive director, executive director hands it off, and until finally, Nois Noil Kayin Gadal. The Kain Gadol Oimed, Kain Gadol stands, Umekabel, the Kore, the Oimed, the Kore Achare Mois, the Achba Asar. Fine. So this is the Mishnah in Mesechta Yuma. The Bavli does not comment. However, it comes a Yushalmi, and the Yushalmi asks the following question. Let's just take note of what's happening over here. We're taking the Sefer Torah to the Kain Gadol. That's not right. We always say, go after the Torah, follow the Torah. The Pasuk says, Achare Hashem Leikechem Teleichu. And now we bring the Torah to them? No. You don't bring the Torah to, you take the Torah, you follow the Torah. You always follow the Torah. In a uh, in an Arayin. So, you're not to bring a Sefer Torah to someone. You have to bring the people to the Sefer Torah. What are you handing it off? From the Chazan to the Rosh HaKnesses to the Skan to the Kayin Gadol? No, let the Kayin Gadol go to where the Torah is. <coughs> says the Gemara, says Yushalmi, El al Yidei Shehein Bnei Adam Gedoylem. Since the Kayhanim Gedoylem, since we're Adam Gedoylem, in other words, they were Tamid HaChachamim, they were great people, not just in position, but in Torah knowledge, then HaTorah Mis'ale Bohen, the Torah is elevated by going to them. Ena to a regular person, to a typ- typical person, you may not move a Sefer Torah. A Sefer Torah is not transportable. But because these people are G'doy Yisrael, or at least they were supposed to be, uh, therefore it was permitted to bring the Torah to them. Ah, oh, but the Yushami asked, V'hataman, but over there... They would bring the Torah to the Reish Galusa. And the Reish Galusa was not an Adam Gadol. It was a political position. So how could you say the only heter to move a Sefer Torah is to an Adam Gadol? Because the Torah is Masala, but the Reish Galusa is not an Adam Gadol. Amar of Yosei, Be Rebbe Bun, Taman Ler, Al Yidei, Shazare, Shodavid, Meshuk Hashem. Since the, the ancestry of David was mixed in there, I believe the difference between the Nasi and the Reish Galuso is the Nasi came from David Mitzad Ha'av and the Reish Galuso came Mitzad Ha'im. But they had the ancestry, the DNA, the Davidic DNA. So, Inun Avdin Loi Kimina Gavasan, they continued to practice the custom of their forefathers. So, in other words, even though the Reish Galuso were not technically Tamid Chachamim, but they descended from the Malchus based of it, and therefore they kept up the practice. But the bottom line here is, 
that what we learn from the Yishami is that a Sefer Torah is not transportable, it's not movable, cannot be moved. The only heter to move it is to a Talmud Chacham, because in that case, it's not a Bizayan for the Torah, it's a Kavad Torah. In fact, the Karban Ha'idah on the Yishami says, um, on the fourth line, the Chashuvim, they're great people, and they're Chashuv, Kavad Hila Torah, Shatav Eliyadam, Vigam Hi Mechabed Asoysam, therefore the Torah could be Mechabedam. Okay. But bottom line is, a Sefer Torah cannot be moved. Based on this Yushalmi, the Maharsham, one of the great Poiskim of the 19th century, Rav Shalom Mordechai HaKoyen Shvadron, the ancestor of Rav Shalom Shvadron, the Magid, he answers a very basic question. According to our calendar, Purim does not come out on Shabbos. However, if it would come out on Shabbos, you would not be allowed to lay in the Megillah on Shabbos. Why? Gzera de Raba. The same way you don't take Dalit Minim on Shabbos and you don't take Shoifer on Shabbos, so too you would not be able to lay in the Megillah on Shabbos. Why? Because we're afraid that you might get a hold of a uh, Megillah on the Rosh Hashanah and you might have some letters that are touching and you might have to look for a Tamar Chacham to Paskin on it. Shema Yavireno Dalit Amis B'Shosh Arabim. Frek the Toysus Yamtif, a very simple question. How then are we allowed to lane on Shabbos? Same problem. Why are we not worried that you'll have two letters that are touching or two, let's say, the kuf, the leg will be touching the main body of the letter and you have a shiler and you have to bring it to a Tamar Chacham. Why don't we have the same chashash? Can you imagine how many more people would come to shul if we didn't have Kriya Satayra? You know, people... Actually, I don't know. You wouldn't have, and then the rabbi would never even speak. If you don't even lay in the Torah, there'd be no drush. I mean, the davening would be 45 minutes. It would be packed. So the Torah says, Yom Tov wants to know, how are you allowed to, how are you allowed to lay in on Shabbos? Why don't we have the same drush of Shema Yavireno Da'aramas Rishos HaRabim? Says the Marsham, what kind of kash is that? It's a Pasha to Teretz. A Sefer Torah is not movable. It's not transferable. It's not, you can't move it from one place to another. Sefer Torah goes from the Aron to the Bima, and that's it. Cannot be brought anywhere else. There's no Gzeiro Shema Yavirena. Who would have the audacity to move a Sefer Torah? You're not allowed to move a Torah. A Torah has two locations, the Aron and the Bima, nowhere else. Nobody's bringing it through the streets. You cannot move a Sefer Torah. It's usher to move a Torah. Bechol Asar Amrinon Holchen Achar Torah. You can't bring Torahs. The Sefer Torah is not moved, so we're not worried. People before they would now you say, well, you're allowed to move it to the cipher. Yeah, but the point here is that people are so hesitant to move a Torah that they always think twice, three times, four times before the Sefer Torah is ever moved, they'll never come to carry a, a Sefer Torah on Shabbos. So based on this Yisoyed, that a Sefer Torah is not movable, the Marsham answers the Kasha of the Taisus Yomtev. There's no Gzeiro Shema Yavirenu because he says like this, he uh, the Taisus Yom Tov, look at number four, says, Kasav HaRav, She'en Kriyas Megillah B'Shabbos, Gzera Shem Yitlena, Da'akol Chayav M'Kriyas Megillah, Ve'en Akol B'Kiyin, V'Kasholi, Imkein Lama Karin, B'Sever Torah B'Shabbos, K'Dath Nam Perak Basra, Why do we lay in Torah on Shabbos? Says the Marsham, number five, on the third line, V'Zei Yesh Li Yashev, The Taisus Yom Tov, Lima Asher Kasavti, Nicha, Da'asar Likach Sefer Torah, Lamaka Im Acher. So it would come out then, that according to this Yushalmi, if somebody was chas shalom not well, or someone was in jail, or someone was in avel Ayalenu, would you be allowed to bring a Sefer Torah to the house? Absolutely not. No heter whatsoever. According to Yushalmi, it would seem it would be absolutely asr. So what do the Rishonim say about this? The Mordechai, Mordechai, one of the great Rishonim, he was born in 1240. He was uh, murdered, Akedah Shashem, in the year 1298. Him and his entire family. One of the great Rishonim, the Mordechai. Mordechai says, Matsasi b'tshuva. Achas, I found in a tshuva. Now the Mordechai doesn't say where he found it. But in the Beis Yosef it's brought that he found it in the tshuva of his Rebbe, the Marami Rotenberg, that Bnei Adam ha'chavushim asurim. You have people in jail. Now in jail, 
They have all kinds of good stuff. They even have Daf Yomi. So now the Shaila is, could they have Kriyas HaTayra? Ein Mavian Etzlam Sefer Taira. You can't bring them a Sefer Taira. Afilu Brosh Hashanah V'yam Akipurim. What? I mean, they want to write a Sefer Taira. They have a life sentence, so... Yeah. Yeah, they could do that, you know. Um, but to bring the Sefer Taira to them, you're not allowed to. Why? Because like it says in Shalmi Perak Balai, Bechol Asar Ad Amar Hochen Achar Toira, Vahacha Tema Malichan Tara Etzloi, El Al Yedine Al Yede, Bene Adam Shem, Bene Adam Gedoilim, Hatar Nesala Behem. So basically, the Mordechai quotes the Yushalmi word for word, and he says, since the Yushalmi advances the principle that a Sevatar may not be moved, if someone Chasashom is in jail, even on the high holidays, and they want to hear a Kriya Satoira, sorry, we cannot bring the same. Now, the only heter would be if he's a Tamil Chacham. Now, why the Tamil Chacham is in jail? Unfortunately, it happens. But he's, he's a maggot chair. Yeah. So, but for <laughs> whatever the case is, whatever the situation is, the Mordechai says you cannot bring the Sefer Torah to uh, the guy in jail. I, he needs to hear Kriya Satoira. What can we do? We cannot be mavaza the Sefer Torah by moving it. Now, if he would be a Talmud Chacham, it would be Mutter. But a regular person, the Mordechai Paskins, Asar. By the way, what does the Beis Yosef say? Beis Yosef quotes the Mordechai word for word, and therefore, according to Beis Yosef as well, it would be Asar to move a Sefer Torah to someone in jail, or Chas Hashem, someone who's sick, or someone who's an Avel. You cannot bring them the Sefer Torah. Yeah, exactly. Good point. Now the Marami wrote right. You know, there's a question in the mice of why he, how he got there. No, I'm right. The Marami Rothenberg himself was incarcerated in uh, Einsheim. Yeah. What about it? It's a good thing to do. Our shul, you want to give one? Our shul taka needs one. No, I'm sorry, what? How? Well, you got to get it from the house of the soifer to the. Again, you're now to move a Sefer Torah to you, but we got to get it from the house of the Sefer to the Shul. You want to know, could you take a circuitous route to, to make a big shebang out of it? We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll see. It's interesting. Some of the tours advertise that they have a Sefer Torah traveling with them. <laughs> I hear. So that, that would certainly be a problem. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that as well. Oh, so you mean Bechlal, why are we bringing a Sefer Torah to an individual? Does an individual have an obligation to hear a Kriya Satara? So, one thing you see from here is, even if Kriya Satara is a Chiv on the Tzibor, an individual has responsibility to be part of that Tzibor. And if he's not, he's losing out on something. In fact, in fact, well, you, so then do what you can to make sure uh, that, that you could be part of a Tzibor. Yeah, you should listen to Chris at that. Uh, that no, there may. It, it's a complex subject. Is Chris Atara mitzvah on an individual, or is the mitzvah on the tzibor? In other words, let's say a, a, it's some type of hybrid mitzvah where the obligation rests on the tzibor, but I have an obligation to be to be part of it, and we'll get to that as well. Okay, Marv Rabbi so right now, it would come out that the only heter ever to, make, uh, to move a Sefer Torah, whether it's a Chayla, whether it's someone who's Bebeis Asurim, an Avel, would only be to a Tamil Chacham. Otherwise, it would come out, based on the Yishami and the Mordechai and the Beis Yosef, that it is Asur. Says the Hagois Ashri, the notes on the Rosh, in the first Parakam Bracha, it's Oif Zayin. Chayla sheyacha lechavein, yavoyu asara v'yispal imay. Let's say you have a sick person and he has the wherewithal to be uh, to daven, then ten people should go to his house to daven with him. V'yim hu adam chashuv be'ira, if he's a chashuv a person, mevi'im lo'i sefer Torah, you could bring him a sefer Torah. Now who, 
is the Haggai says recording the Arza Ruah. That implies that only in Adam Chashev, who's a Chayla, could you bring a Sefer Torah. But if this Chayla would not be in Adam Chashev, you could not bring him a Sefer Torah. Now what if he's in Adam Chashev and would not be a Chayla? We don't know exactly, but all we could infer from this Hagoy Sashri is that a Chayla, who's also an Adam Chashev, you could bring him a Sefer Torah. So right now, there is absolutely no heter ever to move a Sefer Torah to a regular person. Comes the Dark Moshe. Who's the Dark Moshe? The Rama. The Rama's commentary on the Torah. And the Rama quotes the Hagoy Sashri, that from the Arzarua, that a Choyle, you bring ten people to him, and if he's an Adam Chashov, then you can even bring him a Sefer Torah. However, says Rama, but if you actually look up the Arzarua, Uva Arzarua Atzmai Mashma, Dil Adam Chashov, Afapisha, Enoi Choyle, in Adam Chashov, even if he's not sick. In other words, the Hagoy Sashri is Mashma. In order to bring someone to Sefer Torah, you need two ingredients. You need Chayla and Adam Chashov. But if you actually look up the Arzarua, the implication is only Adam Chashov, uh, even an Adam Chashov who's not a sick person, you could bring him a Sefer. Likewise, a sick person who's not an Adam Chashov. Shari. Wow. So the Rama is saying that while the Hagoy Sashri, the way he quotes the Arzarua, it implies you need both ingredients. If you actually look it up, it seems even one ingredient would be good. Gam the Mordechai, the Oyser, even the Mordechai himself, who says you're not to move a Sefer Torah, he himself implies Adam Chashuv, you could move a Sefer Torah too. No, but by the way, the Mordechai is not mashma that a Choyla alone you could uh, move a Sefer Torah too. So Marv Rabbi say right now, if I were to ask you, could you move a Sefer Torah to someone who is ill and cannot get out of bed? What would you say? It's a machlaikis. Good. Excellent. The Mordechai, the Beis Yosef, the Hagoy Sashri would say N-O. And the Ramah, the Ramah's understanding of the Arzarua is yes. So it's a machlaikis rishonim. So what do you do? And is there a chilek if he's a Talmud Chacham? And is also oh, a chilek if Talmud Chacham. Everybody agrees you could move a Sefer Torah to. That's what, what it seems like. Multiple times. Let's say, say three times. Any, so as many times as he that, needs. No, but isn't there a mucker, that, let's say, base oval, that they try to lay in three we'll times? We'll see. Well, so far we have no, we don't see any basis for any, any particular uh, reason to three times, right? We, we haven't found any source for that. And as we're going to see, we're not going to find any source for that. <laughs> and we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll have to see about that. Okay. So right now. Right. Right. You have to treat it with respect. You have to. Uh, Again, maybe to a Talmud Chacham. Or, the, I mean, Sefer Torah are going to travel, you know. You have to get it from the Sefer's house back to the shul. Or if there's a mistake, you have to get it from the shul. There are many instances that you can move a Sefer Torah. When you do so, you have to do it with respect. doesn't mean you have, it's a folding chair that you could just be, you know, you have a Sefer Torah gemach. Every time someone goes on a vacation, you could lend them your Sefer Torah. Okay, so Marv Rabbi one added factor that we have over here is the Dark Moshe quotes the Chuvas of Maharam Padva. Who's the Maharam Padva? Maharam Padva is Rav Meir Katzenelenbogen. They're probably most, put it this way, more people trace themselves back to Rav Meir Katzenelenbogen than any other person alive 500 years ago. I have a book at home called something like the golden chain, two volumes, each one about 600 pages, of nearly everyone today traces themselves back to Rameer Katzenelenbogen. Um, now, who is Rameer Katzenelenbogen? From the sound of his name, is he Ashkenazi or Sephardi? Ashkenazi, it's the, you can't get it. Katz, you can't, but he lived in Italy. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. So what's a nice Ashkenazi, now where, did he, where was he born? Poland. So what's a nice Polish Shayid doing in Italy? Got a job there, that's all. 
Now, I think his father-in-law was Rabbi Huda Mintz. Rabbi Huda Mintz was a contemporary of the Abarbanel. And Rabbi Meir Katzenellenbogen uh, took over the Rabbanos in Italy. And that's why, you know, you have three different types of minhagim. You have minhag uh, Ashkenaz, you have minhag Sfarad, and then you have minhag Italki. Well, where did that come from? When you have a Polish Shagada, a Rav of, uh, of Sfarad Shayudin, then you have minhag Italki. <laughs> but uh, I was there this past summer. I was by his kever in Padua. Anyway, the Maran Padua says like this. Ha de Asr. This, that, it's Asr to move a Taira. Hainu lahaviyah b'shas hakriya lavad. That's only if you bring it solely for Kriya Satayra. Because then it looks like you're moving a Sefer Tara for you. But if you prepare a day or two, Arayin, an Ark, or Teva, or Baks, Bevesoy, Shaper, Dami, that's okay. Why? Because now it doesn't give the appearance that the Torah is moving for you. It moved a day or two before, and it rested there. So it already, it was like Koina Shvisa. It has its designated place. And then when you need it, you go to it. It doesn't look like it's servicing you because you've already established a place for it. Yoim o yoimayim. So you ask, which one? Is it one day or two days? Yes. <laughs> That's either a day or two days. So we have a, a dilemma over here. We have, first of all, machlekes vishayim. Are you allowed to move a Sefer Torah for a chayla or someone in jail? The Mordechai the Beis Yosef says no. The Arzarua seems to say yes. How do we pass again? Number two, the Maram Padwa says, Akula, that you could designate a place for the Sefer Torah a day or two before. Okay, that's the opinion of the Maram Padwa. Do we pass again that way? So where do we have to look? The Shulchan Aruch. So this whole sugya in Halacha uh, consists of one se'if in Shulchan Aruch, Simen Kuf Lamed, hey, se'if Yodalad. So, B'nai Adam HaChavu Shem Asurim, someone in jail, Ein Mavian Etzlam Sefer Taira Afilu Barashashana of Yom Kippur. We do not bring them a Sefer Taira, not on Rosh Hashanah, or not on Yom Kippur. Moira Verabaisai. Who is a Shulchan Aruch Paskening like? The Mordechai and the Beis Yosef, or the Arzarua? The Mordechai. Shulchan Aruch is Paskening that if someone is ill or someone is in jail, you can never bring them the Sefer Torah. I, the Arzarua, says you can. He is a good man, and we don't Paskin that way. The Arzarua, we don't. The Shulchan Aruch is rejecting the approach of the Arzarua, or at least the way the Rama quotes the Arzarua. Shulchan Aruch is Paskening Asr to move a Sefer Torah for someone in a compromised situation. Haga says Rama, v'haynu dafka b'shasa kriya levad. If you prepare the Sefer Torah before, Mutter. Wow. Who is that like? That's like the Maran Padua. So regarding the issue of could you move the Sefer Torah for someone in jail, the answer is no. Regarding the issue of does it help to designate a place a day or two before, yes. You're allowed to move the Sefer Torah. Fine. So it seemed to be open and closed. So let's say you have a guy in jail and it's Parsha Zachar. Could you move the Sefer Torah for him? According to Shulchan Aruch? No. no. What about if you have ten guys in jail? Could you move the Sefer Torah? No. Not, according to Shulchan Aruch, it would no. seem not, right? Comes the Chafetz Chaim, and the Chafetz Chaim says not so fast. Some, comes the Chafetz Chaim in the Bir Halacha, and the Chafetz Chaim says, look, if you learn the Sugya, you would know that the... Uh, Mordechai and the Beis is not the only shita here. There is a shita, the Arzarua, that you're allowed to move a Sefer Torah for a Choyle or someone with a Beis Asurim. Now, the Chavetz Chaim, look at number 11. The Chavetz Chaim starts off in the Bir Halacha. He quotes the source of the Halacha is Yushalmi. Frek the Chavetz Chaim. Just because the Yushalmi says that you always follow a Sefer Torah and you never bring the Sefer Torah to service a person, you can ask a very basic question on that extrapolation. And that is, maybe the Yushalmi that says you can't move a Sefer Torah is talking about to people who are able to go to the Sefer Torah. So if you're able to go to the Sefer Torah, the Sefer Torah will not service them. But how do you know that if somebody's incarcerated or someone's ill and they're in Oynes, 
that the, per, the people have to be stuck without Kriya Satayra. Maybe the derivation from the Yushalmi is only in a situation where you're able to go to the Torah. You're able to go to the Torah. How can the Torah service you? But Frek the Bir Alachu, but Emma's on the fifth line, number 11. Hadar Tamua, that Yushalmi, Marek Shev Shalel Ramak Mishas Evnu Menachas. You could go to it. Ulakav Zilzu, who Kishma Likhan Zarata at Slon. Mashain came to Zesha and Nusim Haim. For writes in the Kamis of Kriya Satayra, Lama Loi Nivia Aleim. Why in the world should it be Asur to bring a Sefer Torah to a Chayla or some of these Asurim? My Zilusu Hula Sefer Torah. Is it disparaging to a Sefer Torah if people want to learn it? Now that, to me, that is an awesome question. You know why? Because I would say, good question, Chafetz Chaim. But the Shulchan Aruch also knew how to learn. And the Rishayim also knew how to learn. And the Shulchan Aruch concluded, you're not allowed to. So here the Chavaz Chaim is showing tremendous boldness, basically, to ask a kasha on, on Rishonim and come out with a different conclusion than the Shulchan Aruch. But, now let's, let, look where the Chavaz Chaim takes us. Right. Correct, no, right. No, um... Okay, it's a good diuk, but if it would have been different, then the Shachnach would have made that point. You know why he didn't say even, even on. It could be he's just talking about the psychology of people. You know, people feel more desperate or they want to be mahader more yom naram. But in a chanami, it would have been a bigger chiddush if he would have said even parsha zachar. But then the Chavetz Chaim sort of defends his question that he found this question in the pre chadash. Says the Chavetz Chaim and. I'm not revolutionizing halacha here because the opinion of the Arzarua is that you do move a Torah to a Chayla or someone in jail like the Darkei Moshe quotes. And the Arzarua says a logic why we bring it. Why? Because if you bring a Sefer Torah to a Tamar Chacham to honor them, certainly someone who's an Anos, you should bring them a Sefer Torah. And says the Chavetz Chaim, then Mali if someone is sick, or Mali if someone is in jail. Ah. And therefore the Chavetz Chaim has a very interesting conclusion. Says the Chavetz Chaim, I would never, based on a question, come out with a different conclusion than the Shulchan Aruch. Just because, just because I have a question on the Shulchan Aruch, how does the Shulchan Aruch know that you're not allowed to bring a Sefer Torah to people in jail, but they're an Oynes, I would never conclude differently than the Shulchan Aruch. And therefore, bottom line is, if someone is in jail or someone is sick, we don't have the kayak to argue on the Shulchan Aruch and to say you could bring them the Sefer Torah. But, says the Chafetz Chaim, in the following scenario, Uladina Nira, Da'afilu Laha Mordechai, even the Mordechai, who says you can't bring a Sefer Torah to someone who's sick or someone who's in jail, He's talking about people in jail, and they want to gather, in other words, you have one guy in jail, so he wants to bring a Sefer Torah, and another nine Yidin. Ah, Bezeh Oyser. That, the Mordechai says, it's Oser, not like the Arzarua. Why? Because we tell the guy, hey pal, why are you bringing the Sefer Torah? Because you want to lane? Who told you to lane? You don't have an obligation to lane. You're only a Yachid. Oh, you want to put upon yourself an obligation by bringing nine other people and bringing a Sefer Torah? No, we, we're not going to service you like that. So, mitam de minadim yesh loimar, you could say, according to the letter of the law, in chala yachem mitzvah kriya satara, when he can't go. Look carefully at the words of al Chavetz Chaim. When a person can't go, it's not chal on him, the mitzvah of kriya satara. But if you could go to shul, then it is chal on you, the mitzvah of kriya satara. But, says the Chavetz Chaim, if you have 10 people in jail, or you have 10 people in the hospital, it's chal on them, Kriya Satoira. I would say, says the Chavetz Chaim, even the Mordechai and the Beis Yosef would agree, you would then be allowed to bring them the Sefer Taira. The Mordechai and the Beis Yosef are talking about a Yachid. So by a Yachid, says the Chavetz Chaim, I don't have the Koyach because of my Kasha on the Gemara, to argue on the Mordechai and the, the Shulchan Arach. 
But if you have 10 people in jail, you have 10 people in the hospital, then, Gam HaMordechai Moide, the Tzarech Lahavi Lahem Sefer Tar Oh! And even, in fact, the Elia Rabbi found in one of his Terutzim, he also agrees that, according to the Mordechai, we're not talking about when 10 people are in jail. Now, there is no question, Rabbi Isai, does the Chavot Chaim know for sure that the Mordechai would agree that even when there's 10 people, you're allowed to move the Sefer Torah? No. It's certainly also based on the fact that there is a, little, a legitimate position of the Arzarua that you are allowed to move a Sefer Torah to even to an individual. Now, we're not going to rely on the Arzarua straight up to move a Sefer Torah to an individual. But in combination with the fact that you have 10 people and you could possibly make the case that even the Mordechai would agree when there are 10 people you could move the Sefer Torah, the Chavetz Chaim's conclusion is you may move a Sefer Torah to 10 people in jail or 10 people who are ill. But then the Chavetz Chaim says even further. Says the Mishnah Bura, Simen Kuf Lamed Hey, Sivkat Mem Vav. That the Mechaber says you can't move a Sefer Torah to someone in jail, says the Mishnah Bura, but says the Mishnah Bura, V'yesh chalkim b'chalzeh. Some argue. Kivan da anusim heim, because there are anus. Who argues? The Arzarua. Oh! Uve parsha zochar shu da raisa, bevada yesh lahachim. For parsha zochar, which is da raisa, you could then definitely be soimech on the sheet of the Arzarua and bring the guy the Sefer Taira. Amazing. So it's not across the board that you can never move a Sefer Taira to a Chayla or a Psalm of Esau Asurim. So I didn't realize this. Let's say you have someone who's homebound and he wants to hear Parsha Zachar. So now what? Well, no, no, we don't bring a Sefer Taira. No. We would be obligated to move the Sefer Torah, get nine, pe- nine other people to join him in his room, and you're going to lean for him. It's an amazing thing. I don't, I don't think I ever saw that done. But that's what the Mishnah Baruch Paskins. What about Parshas Para? He says, V'efshir dehu hadin gam Parshas Para. It could be, since there are opinions, that Para is Dairaisa, you can move a Sefer Torah even for Parshas Para. Okay. Comes our Chashulchan, what? No, no, you can't move it to learn from. You can learn from it in shul, but you can't move it to learn. Comes the Archa Shulchan, a very interesting halacha. Va'oid amru, the zehora kish mevian hatara mi beis haknesses, b'shas hakriya, v'yachakach machzirin oisel beis haknesses. Avla mevian oisel mi kaidem, if you bring the Sefer Torah first, u'menichem oisel ba'arayin, in other words, this problem of moving a Sefer Torah is only if you move it right before laning. However, if you bring it before and you leave it in the Arayin, Aybateva Sheyesh Salmakam Yuchan Aizazman, Les Lanba. Fehaminog Ledaktek Sheyikru Ba Gimel Palamim. The Minog is to lane it three times. Dezem Mikri Bekvias. Vein Bizayon Bemasha Tiltalumi Besaknesas. Avo pachos mi gimel pamim, less than three times, til taluha l'tzarech arai, v'yesh pizayon, afim hivim ikoidem. So the Archa Shulchan is adding, for a change, a chumrah. And the Archa Shulchan is saying, even if you bring the Sefer Torah a day or two in advance, you must lane it, the minigah is lane it three times. So then it comes out, if you're bringing a Sefer Torah to a base of Eloi Eleinu, and they're only laning it Monday and Thursday, and they're not using it by Mincha. I don't know what the, 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 I think in most places they don't lean it in the base of El Mincha by Shabbos. But I'm not sure. Do they? Right. Or, uh, you know, if somebody, uh, somebody passes it before Yom Tif, according to the Archa Shulchan, you can't bring the Sefer Torah. Okay, good. That's also an issue. We're going to talk about that. Are you allowed to move it on some Torah? But says the Archa Shulchan, Mikol ze mavur, um, umikol matzin zvar mavur, d'lo yafel oisim rabbi me amoyin ha'am b'roshanim yom akipurim b'simchas Torah. That it is not correct what in many places they do on Roshanim yom kippur b'simchas Torah. That before the kriya they take a sefer Torah and they read it elsewhere. Why? Why do they read it elsewhere? Because it's a big Indian to get an aliyah on yom naram. <laughs> so what do they do? They take the sefer Torah out and they read it in another house, that's for sure a problem. 
in another room might also be a problem. <coughs> but says the Archa Shulchan, this custom, la yafe, it's not correct to take the Sefer Torah from the Basic Nessa and re- read it elsewhere. The Acha Akriya Machzir knows the Basic Nessas. The Kavanosom, their Kavanos, Kedei Lalois, the Torah, Yama Makudashim Ela. Avo Yatsa Scharam, they have Sedam, whatever benefit they get goes down the tubes. Lavor Avera, the Yamim Hamakudashim, they're violating a sin. Vulay Lachosh, the Chvara Taira. Vlachain Roy Limchais Bam. Get your rotten tomatoes out and be Moicha, the Ligzar Shlayasukain. And anybody who wants to have a good life, says Archa Shulchan, should listen to me. So according to Archa Shulchan, now he's adding two things. First of all, he says that it's not enough to um, take it out a day or two before. You have to lay in it three times, which we're going to see the Mishnah Baruch does not mention that. And where I come from, Mishnah Baruch is the final word. And uh, we're not be required to, to read it three times. But that is the minog that is brought down in the Archa Shulchan. Um, and the other thing he brings down is to, to have a Kriyas HaTayra on Simchas Taira outside of the Shul. You know how to do that. Yeah, but everyone has Gen Ali and then Tircha de Tzibura. Very nice. Good rationalization. But not enough to violate an Isser of moving a Sefer Taira. What about another room? We'll have to see. We'll see, the opinion of the Vilna Goyen is, cheder le cheder, you're not allowed to move a Sefer Torah. Now, I'm not sure if we pass in that way. What? Of course. So we'll see, to, uh, for the Shmira of the Sefer Torah, um, you're allowed to do that. We'll see what to do in such a situation. But, by the way, Rabbi Isai, if you look in the Mishnah Bura, Mishnah Bura gives another kula that it's not only, not only would you be allowed to designate a place a day or two in advance, Mishnah Bura number 15 says, Not only are you allowed to designate a place a day, a day or two in advance, but what you could do is you could put it there that day and leave it there a day or two after. That would also be okay. Provided that you don't just bring it in for the Kriya Satoira, you put it there an hour before and you let it stay there a day or two after. Because um, then it's not recognizable, you're only uh, doing it for your Kriya Satoira. Okay, very interesting. What about this Adam Chashuv? What is the definition of an Adam Chashuv? What if someone's a mayor, a politician? <coughs> A senator says in Mishnah Bura, Adam Chasha means God of Batayra, and that's it. Because the Torah gets an aliyah by servicing these people. But Stam, oh, he's a very Chash of a person. Okay, you could continue to say that, but you can't bring him a Sefer Torah. Fine. So now the question is are you allowed to bring a Sefer Torah to the house of an Avel? Well, according to the Mishnah Bura, if you designate a day or two before, a day or two after, it would be okay. Rav Yaakov Emden, however, said it is Asur. It is Asur. Now, I'm not telling you we pass like Rav Yaakov Emden, but just to get a feel for the, the reality of, of the Inyan, it says Rav Yaakov Emden, Yafel Oisim, Ashinagim, Bekihilas Kodesh Ehu. Ehu is what? What, what is the Kihilas Kodesh Ehu? Altona, I believe, Hamburg, Vansbeck. These were the ancient Kihilas Ashkenaz. If, uh, if anybody, you spoke about a trip. We're, we're Bezos Hashem, planning a trip there this summer to all the big farim in uh, Rabbi Yaakov Emden, Rabbi Yonasana Eibeshitz, Pnei Yeshua. What? Am I taking a Sefer Torah? I, that's not my department. <laughs> but I think they're going to have a Sefer Torah. Um, but I think they'll have it there in those Makaimais. Anyway... That's a separate issue. That's a, we that we're not dealing with uh, Parsha Zachar. Now we're talking about uh, Parsha Zachar. Shahavel Rachman Otsan Moitzi Sevatar Vesak Nessus. Oma Amido Bebesoi Bezayin Yumei Avelos. Lukos Boy Bimei Haknisa. Dahani Vade Loi Shapravde. It's the wrong thing. 
And besides that, says Rabbi Yaakov, there are other problems. They don't treat it properly because they keep it in the kids' playroom where the kids are running around with dirty diapers. You need to strengthen yourself to invite this terrible minog. Every um, Tom, Dick, and Harry is making his own religion that, yeah, we're allowed to uh, move the Sefer Torah. But the responsibility and the onus rests on the shoulders of the Rabbanon to speak up. I, maybe it's mutter. No, says of Yaakov Emden, it's obviously aruka. It's an explicit halacha that even the house of the Abezin and the Nasi, if the Abezin and the Nasi chasajam dies, that Sibur comes to their house to Davin, and you're not, it's a beferish halacha in your day. You can't move the Sefer Torah there to Davin. So we see from here three things. Number one, we don't bring move a Sefer Torah for any reason. Number two, seven days is not considered, Kviyas is considered Arai. And number three, I now it's a Tircha de, de Tzibura, Buhu. They're going to have to suffer a little bit and go back to the Shul. But bottom line is, Rabbi Yaakov Emden does not allow the, move, uh, the movement of a Sefer Torah for an Avel. I guess the fact that we do it, we're being Samech on the Mishnah Bura, that if you uh, designate a place a day or two in advance, that is a legitimate kula. Okay. Uh, that's not my problem. That's his problem. He'll decide what he needs to do. But he, you can't move the Sefer Torah to him. So you have to keep it a day or two after. That's it. Mr. Bruce said either a day or two before or a day or two after. Either way is okay. So here's the, one of the issues we want to discuss. One of uh, the issues we want to discuss is that if you dive in by the Kaisel Hamaravi and you have you know, the big uh, safe, the big Arain on the northern side in the cave over there, and when the Minyanim want to dive in, they go in there and they're Mechabit Zon for Psicha, and he goes and he takes out an Ara, he takes out a Sefer Torah, and he brings the Sefer Torah to the Minyan. Is that permitted? Because in such a case, the people are not going to the Torah. The Torah is going to the people. And they do that every day, countless times. Is that permitted? So comes the Tzitzel Yezer, Rav Valdenberg, in the 11th vo- volume of Tzitzel Yezer, Sim Zayin, and he says, it is absolutely forbidden to do that. You're not allowed to go into that area and bring the Sefer Torah to the people. Who says you're not allowed to do that? The Yushalmi. The Yushalmi says, first of all, um, says the, um, the Tzitzel Yezer, the best thing is, let the minion move themselves, get up, and lay in the Torah in the cave. Kiddich Siv, who says it? Hashem says it. It's a pasuk in Chumash. Acharei Hashem lekechem teilechu. Like the Gemara says in Saita, the, if you're in a shul and you need to leave early, you have to wait until the Sefer Torah is put back in its location, and then you could leave. Why? Because of Acharei Hashem lekechem teilechu. You're subject to the Torah. The Torah is not here to service you. So, and that's how we paskin in Arachayim, Simen Koflamet Hei, Sif Yedalet, that unless you're in Adam Chashov or in jail, um, it's not permitted. Says the Tzitz Eliezer, well, maybe you'll say it's all the same area because, well, he says, no, the Gra says, Mecheder lecheder ein metalton sefer Torah. Now that's a problem according to the Gra. Because, you know, very often on some Torah, you want to take the sefer Torah and bring it to another room to lay in it. I don't comment on any institutions in the tri-state area, but uh, ca- according to the Gra, you cannot move a Torah from from cheder to cheder. So says the the Tzitzel Yezer, you cannot move the Torah from this from the Ulam to the uh, the Kosel Plaza because that's no better than mecheder to cheder, and if anything, it's considered worse than cheder to cheder. It's from bias to bias. I look in the paragraph that begins unahi. I, for the Shmira of a Sefer Torah, it's mutter to bring it from the Makam Atfila and to put it elsewhere. In other words, let's say you're davening and you're finished laning. You're allowed to bring the Sefer Torah to a safe that's in a different room. Now, obviously then, says Tzitzel Yezer, you can't leave the Sefer Torah permanently out there in the plaza, unprotected from the elements, from the rain, from the heat. It needs to be protected. Okay, 
So therefore, if the guys in the minion do not want to pick themselves up and go lay in the taira in the cave, then what they need to do is you should put it on a arayin. And they used to have this. I don't know, maybe they still have this. I'm embarrassed to say when the last time I was there was, like 17 years ago. Um, they, at least what the Tzitzel Yezer reports, um, the original Minaguas, they would put the, uh, the Sefer Torah in a movable Aaron and they would wheel it. So that's not called taking the Sefer Torah out of its place. The Sefer Torah remains in its place. You're basically, what you're doing now is you're, bring, you're taking the place of the Sefer Torah and you're bringing the place of the Sefer Torah to the people. That would be the next best thing if you don't want to put... If, if everybody doesn't want to pick themselves up and go lay it over there, then bring the Sefer Torah in Arayin. Or, let the whole minion pick up, go there, and escort the Sefer Torah to the place where they want to lay in. But, but to bring the Sefer Torah to the minion, that you're not allowed to do. Says to say, yes or no, you're not allowed to move a Sefer Torah. That's what the Yishami says. And um, the Makar of this is Yad Aroin. The Yad Aroin brings in the name of the Tshuva Edus Bihaisef that um, when you don't have a Sefer Torah, and they, if, when the Sefer Torah is not in the Shul, and the Sefer Torah has to be stored in a guarded place, then on a Monday and Thursday, then you bring the Sefer Torah to Shul in the morning, but not at the time of Kriya Torah. And the Ikrei Hadat brings down that if people have a Sefer Torah in their house um, and they want to lay on Sukkot in the Sukkah, so how are you going to get the Sefer Torah from the house to the Sukkah? It's in a Gnai to take the Sefer Torah from the house to the Sukkah. So that what they could do is to let the whole minion go to the house and escort it to the Sukkah. So therefore, um, says Tzitzel Yazar, certainly in the, the Kaisal, which is a makam kadosh, you should do things in the best possible way. And the best possible way is you should lean in the cave. And if you can't do that, you should put it in an arayin. And if you can't do that, let the whole shul, let the whole minion escort the Sefer Torah. But to bring the Sefer Torah to the minion, it's Asr Ladina. However, in the Yalkut Yosef, Yalkut Yosef brings down that uh, the exact same chuvas of the Yad Arayin, in the name of the Edos Bihoisef and the Ikri Hadat, um, and he brings down that in this situation it's more lenient. He says, achasi. and he adds a factor there are people everywhere. So, since there are people everywhere, the people everywhere sort of extend the shul of the coastal area to the entire area. And even though the Tzitz Eliezer is Machmir, I am Mekel, and I even asked Maran Shlita, I asked my father, Rabbi Vadia, and Rabbi Vadia says, and it's Mutter. So, for all you Sfardim, you could definitely rely on Rabbi Vadia. But um, Ashkenazim could also rely on Rabbi Vadia. But there is something to think about, whether in fact this practice is permitted to take the Sefer Torah out of that area and move it into uh, to the Minyanim. Okay, what about another issue? And that is some Torah, or when you have Achnasa Sefer Torah. So what happens Achnasa Sefer Torah? So there's some kind of custom where as the Sefer Torah is coming toward the shul, you take all the Sefer Torah out of the Arayin and you bring it outside to greet the Sefer Torah. So it says the Berke Yosef, what in the world are people doing? He says, in Afim at Tzibur Betzara, even if the Tzibur is distressed, you can't bring out the Sefer Torah to the Beis HaKfaros, and you can't even take a Sefer Torah in the Beis HaKnesses to greet other Sefer Torah that are new. And um, he says over here, says, that I'll you're never allowed to move a Sefer Torah. What? But, you know, the Sefer Torah is going to be lonely. It will only be a few extra seconds, and soon he'll be in the company of many other Sefer Torah. However, Says the Chida, the Ramach, um, and brings down that Rabbi Yaakov Abuhav, Niksav Yad, permitted to take out a Sefer Torah to greet another Sefer Torah, and even to bring 
um, other Sifrei Torah from one shul to another, so that on Simchas Torah you have seven Sifrei Torah, it is permitted and it would only be Asar to uh, take out a Sifrei Torah be'es Sara. So apparently there is, a, uh, there is a position that is permitted to take out Sifrei Torah to greet a coming Sefer Torah. So, bottom line, are we allowed to do this? There's a tshuva in the Yabiya Oimer, Chilak Dalet, Simen Tesvav, whether it is a correct practice that when a new Sefer Torah is brought to a shul to bring out the other Sefer Torah. So, Rav Avadi quotes the Yushalmi, and who says we don't move Sefer Torah, and he quotes the Mordechai. It says Rav Avadi, well, wait a second, but you are allowed to take out a Sefer Torah for an Adam Chasha, for a Tamil Chacham. If you're allowed to bring a, a Sefer Torah out to greet an Adam Chashav, and the Gemara in Kedushin says that if you stand up for a Tamar Chacham, you certainly stand up for a Sefer Torah. So let's make a Kabbalah Chaymer. That if you're allowed to bring a Sefer Torah to an Adam Chashav, certainly you'd be allowed to bring out a Sefer Torah to another Sefer Torah. But he says that's not necessarily a sound argument. Because when are you allowed to bring out a Sefer Torah to an Adam Chashav? That's to read from it. But to bring out a Sefer Torah to other Sefer Torah, you're not bringing it out to read from. You're just bringing it out as a greeting. It could be it's not permitted, especially Alpi the Zayar. The Zayar is very machmir, says Rabbi Vadya, about taking out a Sefer Torah. However, says Rav Adya, if you look in the Chida, the Chida brings an opinion that you are allowed to take out a Sefer Torah. This is an Oishe in number 22. You are allowed to take out a Sefer Torah to greet other Sefer Torah. And then he brings, the Ikrei Hadad brings from the Pachad Yitzchak. Not Rav Hutner. Pachad Yitzchak is Rav Yitzchak Lamprunti. Also of Italy. Shehiter lahalacha ulamaisa, he permitted... Um, one Rav did not allow a Sefer to take home a Sefer Torah. And the Rav Yitzhak Lamprunti proved that the whole Chaymer of the Zayar, of moving a Sefer Torah, is only for an Ace Sarah. But to fix a Sefer Torah, you're for sure allowed to. And Rav Yitzhak Lamprunti writes like this All the big rabbis allow Sefer Torah to be brought to greet other Sefer Torah. Nobody said boo. Ferrara. That's where Rav Yitzhak Lamprunti lived. He lived in Ferrara, in the city of Ferrara. Lahoilach Sefer Torah, Neget Sefer Torah Chadash. They did allow, in Ferrara, in, in this one beautiful city of Ferrara, we allow it. But they don't bring the Sefer Torah out of the Shar Gadol, of the, the uh, courtyard of the Basic Nesses, because they don't need to. And then he says, um, in Sophia and Agafia, they also, they also bring out a Sefer Torah to greet other Sefer Torah. And in Anjian Poli, they do the same. And Minag Shal Yisrael Torahi, so concludes Rabbi Vadya, Zois um, Torah Sa'ila, this is what emerges. Sheminogze, Shanagu, Lahoitzi Sefer Torah, Likra Sefer Chadash, the custom of bringing Sefer Torah to greet other Sefer Torah, Yisai Dasai Bahare Kodesh, has very strong foundations. Uchvar Nagu came with Nei Rabbanim Gedoy, Lameisani Oilam, and the greatest of rabbis witnessed this custom without saying a word. And Adar Rabba, they were Mechazik the custom. And therefore, those who want to challenge it, based on the Kafachayim, um, are incorrect, and they are being goyrem menias covered the sefer Torah. And therefore, this is a correct practice. And Rabbi Vadi endorses the custom of bringing out sefer Torah to greed other sefer Torah, even though it's not being read from. Yeah, that is a chiddush. Could you bring a riot from Hakel? Now, which Sefer Torah were they leaning from? Was it the... Now we're going to see, by the way, the Shal Tzitzu's Har Tzvi, of Tzvi Pesach Frank, in number 23, in Simon Ayin Aleph. He says this entire issue is only talking about the Sefer Torah that belongs to a Tzibor. But if it's your personal Sefer Torah, then it is your folding chair. And you can do whatever you want with it. It's yours. You own it. And you have complete uh, control over it. He says, 
uh, the second to last paragraph in number 23. Then you could move it. My nafkamina. It's, it's personal property. It's, it's my chumash. It does not have the restrictions. So apparently, yeah. But it's not hooked us to the tzibor. If it's not hooked us to the tzibor, then you could sort of stipulate. I'm only. I'm writing it on condition that I'm in charge, and you can maintain control over it. Because I wrote it for me to learn from. So if I wrote for me to learn from, I uh, yeah, I, I'm going to a chasna. Now you know sometimes people at a chasna, it's a very nice thing to learn. You know you don't need to bring the chasn shas to you know. So imagine a guy takes out, he whips out a sefer Torah, he does hagba and all the. But uh, that's what the tzitzel are. Pa- that's what the hartsvi paskins. Yeah. So so far, based on everything we saw it would not seem to be a legitimate basis to take it out and to read from it outside of the, the, main, uh, the main room. But now we're going to bring in one additional factor that may change this. Um, the last shayla of the day is the, the shayla of the Har Tzvi. And the issue is, you know, in many shuls, it's like a minion factory. And you have the main sanctuary, as you call it. And then you have something called the, the polish, which is the, the hallway, the side room. Yeah, the Bayusheni. And uh, here's the issue. And, the, you know, there's the 9 o'clock minion, they're still davening. Um, or they're, they're, uh, they're just getting started. The 9 o'clock minion is just getting started. And the 8.30 minion, you know, they, they can come into the main shul to lane. So they want to lane in the Bayusheni. Are you allowed to move the Sefer Torah to the hallway to be able to lane for them? So, so far we said, you know, I'll do that. That's, you know. But now the question is, is there, if we find any basis for that? And says the Hart Svi, don't forget the Bir Halacha. What was the Bir Halacha? Bir Halacha said that even though we pass on like the Shulchan Aruch, that you cannot move a Sefer Torah to a Chayla or a Son Viveso Asurim or somebody who is an Anos, that's only an individual. But if you have a minion, so now, he, the, the Bira Allah said, maybe even the Mordechai would agree you could move the Torah to the Tzibor. And in such a case, that if somebody is an Oynes and they can't come to the Torah, you could bring the Torah to them. Well, in such a case, the 8.30 minion is an Anas. What, what do you want them to do? Wait around till 9 o'clock minion finishes to lane? Uh, they they got to go. They got to go to work. So they can't lane in the shul. So now, why are they any different than the Bir Halacha's 10 people in jail or 10 people in the hospital that you're allowed to move the Sefer Torah for? So look in the, in the Hart Tzvi, look at number 23, the left-hand column, the top paragraph, that even the Mordechai who asks to bring a Sefer Torah to people in jail, that's only Yechidim, but... Um, if you have a minion, since the chiv of Chris does chal on them and they can't go there, we could bring it to them. Now the Minchas Pitim asks on the El Yaraba that the Yushalmi is not mashma that way. Why? Because Yushalmi asks, how could you bring the Sefer Torah to the Kohen Gadol? But, um, oh, excuse me, how can you bring the Sefer Torah to the Reish Galusa? But the Reish Galusa is not an Adam Chashov. But wait a second. The Reish Galusa had a uh, he had a minion with him. Had a, excuse me, how could you, the Yishami asked, how could you bring the Sefer Torah to the Kohen Gadol? What's the Kasha Yishami? But the Kohen Gadol has a minion. Elamai, even when there's a minion, you can't bring a Sefer Torah. Not like the Bir Alacha. So the Hartsu says, no, what are you talking about? The Kohen Gadol has a minion, but the minion with him are not chayiv in the Kriya Satoira, the Kohen Gadol. The only one who's chayiv in the Kriya Satoira, the Kohen Gadol, is a Kohen Gadol. He needs a minion because otherwise he can't read from the Torah. But you can't prove that you're now to move a Sefer Torah for a minion. You could still, uh, you could still 
conjecture, as the Biralacha does, and you could still advance that if you have a minion who's Chayv and Kriyasa Torah and they can't go to the Torah, you could bring the Torah to then. Therefore, concludes the Hartzi, if the minyanim that are davening in the hall cannot come into the shul, then the Chiyah of Kriyasa Torah is Chal on them. Bring the Sefer Torah to them. It's Mutter. Now, would that be a heter for Simchas Torah? I don't think so. I would say, here you have people. They woke up at 8.30. They don't want to wait around a half hour. They have a chiv kriya satayra. So it's, and they're anonymous. They can't go into 9 o'clock minyan. They're, they're up to Shemana Esrei, the 9 o'clock minyan. So why can't you bring the Torah to them? But Simchas Torah, so the chiv is chal on everybody. So, so lane, so wait here in lane. No, I don't want to wait so long. Terchad de Tzibura doesn't push off moving a Sefer Torah. What pushes off moving a Sefer Torah is the Tzibur has a Chiv to lane, and they're an us and they can't go there. So I don't, unless you say, um, like, like Rebbe Vadya, and you're, you say not like the Vilna Gain, that Cheder, you'll say Cheder le Cheder is Mutter. You can move it from Cheder le Cheder. And uh, it's all one area. So that's what those places that they move the Sefer Torah out of, out of the room, they're probably relying on the fact that cheder le cheder is permitted, and it's all one shul, it's one area, and therefore it's permitted. But technically speaking, if you could avoid moving it out of the room, that would probably be better. But another minion, it sounds like there is a justification for that, and that is the fact that they fall under the category of the heter of the Biharlacha, that they are a minion, and the chiv of Kriya Satara is chal on them, and you'd be able to bring them to Sefer Torah. So bottom line is, Rabbi Sai, it comes out that if Loyalena, somebody is sick, or somebody is Bevesa Asurim to an individual, you cannot bring them a Sefer Torah. If they're an Adam Chashav, you could bring them a Sefer Torah. If there's a minion in jail or a minion in the Beis HaChoylem, you would be allowed to. Most Sifrei Torah are owned by Yechidim, and they're lent to shuls. You try to use that as a possibility. You know, it's uh, Rabbi X's, and it's lent to this, this, and this shul. So he'll, you call him yeah. up and ask. I don't know, because, you know, what, what did he, he gave it to the shul. It's been in the Aron for 50 years, and the Tzibur is using it. Elamai, he just has a clause, he only wrote that. Because, you know, he wants to be able to, to keep it for his children. But I don't know if he maintains control of a yachid. I'm not sure. I don't know. Now, Rabbi Isai, so... What? Yeah. So, an individual, you can't move a Torah to. A Tamachacham, you are allowed to move a Torah to. But an individual on Parsha Zachar, or maybe even Parsha Para, you would be allowed to. But for a minion, that would be different. To a base of Avel, if you designate a place a day or two before, that would be permitted. Now, let's say somebody's going on a trip and uh, they want to have Kriya Taira. Could they bring a Sefer Taira with them? If they're a Yachid, yes. If it's the Tzibors? No. What? Right, if a trip operator makes a Sefer Taira. Now, if anybody wants to join us on a trip in August, from August 13th to August 18th, then uh, you, this is a commercial, yes. Pri- this is a private commercial. Um, then see me after this year. But I can't guarantee that we're going to have a Sefer Taira. <laughs> okay, have a good day. Shkaya. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.